this Future Cities Africa episode is in conversation with Nextech. Sean Bennett, Group Executive for Nextech, an entity of the EOH Group, is my guest today. We discuss how Nextech helps in building smarter African cities. Sean, welcome. Can you give us a brief introduction to your background and current role at Nextech? Personally, I mean, I've got a sort of had various different roles, but uh, came through, I was originally an investment banker, and then I ran a, a junior mining company, and then uh, Stephen brought me in to run Nextech, which is one of the two main subsidiaries of EOH, to help him sort of turn it around, because I think in 2019, EOH was going through some challenges. Uh, so it was forming a new team, which we've uh, largely done. So it was heavily loss-making and it's now profitable. It's a business that's got two main stripes, so or pillars, as we like to call them. The first one is around people, which is obviously critical in any sort of uh, business. We do training. We help clients in relation to their BE uh, scores. We do functional outsourcing as part of our talent business. We do temporary employment services, recruitment, uh, etc. So that's the people stripe. And then on the other side, we've got an infrastructure stripe where... Uh, we've got various different solution groups, um, so we can provide clients with solutions around environmental, logistics, building and security, uh, water, power, and connectivity. I mean, we're obviously very closely allied to the broad EOH group, which is predominantly an ICT company. So a lot of the solutions can be ICT focused, and we work closely with our sister division, which is IOK. Thanks, Sean. Talking smart cities, what is your definition of a smart city in the African context? You are seeing one or two places around Africa where new cities are being built and they're integrating technology into it as part of the fabric of the city itself. I think, you know, probably we are slightly different to a lot of the rest of the world, at least the developed markets. So to me, a smart city is... Uh, a smarter city than, you know, so it's taking the bricks and mortar that we currently have. It's taking the infrastructure we have and it's adding the technology layer to help us manage it better. So, you know, the use of IoT, the use of building management systems, taking technology to help us in relation to some of the other infrastructure requirements. And that's really what it is. And it's just what's smart today isn't smart tomorrow. What's smart today is incredibly smart compared to yesterday. So it's a constant moving environment. But it's just trying to use technology to help us manage it. I mean, you know, a lot of things can be managed on a cell phone nowadays. A lot of our clients are coming to us and talking to us about, because we're seeing obviously an escalation, things like uh, power prices, building management systems can take out a lot of the costs because it can help you manage it more efficiently uh, and from a central place. So, you know, there's a lot of technology out there that's, and it, it's got to be fit for market, it's got to be value add, it's got to create the benefits that it needs to do. So. Thanks, Sean. How can cities better leverage technology to make cities smarter, enable economic transformation, and make cities inclusive, meaning not just benefit the few? In order to make it smarter, our cities smarter, I mean, there's various different bits. So from a utilities perspective, we can be using technology to help us, A, manage it better, get ahead of the curve. So if we take by way of example, because we lose so much water, and it's called non-revenue water, you know, it means that those people who are in need, those people who probably have a lack of you know, a lower income bracket, you know, we, our water is just disappearing underground. If we use technology to help us reduce that, that allows us to make better decisions around who can have things such as water. Uh, and it's the same with power. I mean, you know, there's a lot of you know, big, heavy users of power that could be more efficient. Uh, and yet uh, there's a lot of people in the country that don't have power. You know, and when you've got a shortage, it tends to go to the people that can pay. You know, if we can actually manage our situation better, then it allows us to give us more options in relation to some of the other people that maybe don't have as much uh, income. I think the other thing, you know, we, we spend, you know, we talk about roads. You know, we've got technology now and uh, that we've got within our business that allows us to pick up the cracks in the pavement which, you know, you mend a crack, it's a fraction of the cost of mending a pothole. So we've got to get ahead of some of the problems. We've got to use some of the technology to help us solve it. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that all the problems can be solved through technology, but um, it can definitely make us more efficient. And we do have a sort of two-tiered structure here, those with and those without, and those with need to help those without. But, you know, where there's lack of water, then it's, you know, it's a major problem. 
um, and we're seeing that in quite a lot of municipality and provinces. You know, by reducing the flow, reducing the pressure, we can help them at least slow down the problem and reduce that non, you know, until such time as the sort of the reservoirs, et cetera, fill up. You have to also remember that, I mean, it's, I think it's a really important point. South Africa actually has incredibly good connectivity. You know, we've got you know, the internet and you know, fiber means that we can create an environment that allows us to leapfrog a lot of our people. So we've got sort of world-class sort of connectivity and we need to use that. It's quite interesting. There's stats around the number of people with smartphones in South Africa is huge. So there's a lot we can be doing. I think there's a lot of education we can be doing, e-learning we can be doing. It's already proven that e-learning can, be, you know, can really facilitate uh, students. They can get access through their phones to a lot, you know, a lot of wide courses, so we can upskill people. Um, so I think there's a huge amount we can do as a country if we sort of embrace the technology and you know try and encourage its use throughout the, the community. You've mentioned that South Africa has world-class connectivity. There is, however, a lack of digital infrastructure in many smaller towns and townships. What is currently holding back progress and what does success look like? Look, I think you've got two tiered structures. So in respect that um, you've got the fiber and then you've got sort of the 5G, etc. I mean, at the end of the day, businesses will tend to roll out most quickly where they can make the most money. So, I mean, that's just a fact. And that's where someone like a regulator comes in and has to encourage, you know, more broad connectivity and encourage as you know, part of the price to pay that we roll it out into sort of secondary cities and into the more rural environments. It's not necessarily initially going to be economic to do that, but it's, you know, it's part of the cost of that infrastructure and part, you know, it has to be priced in. I think South Africa is encouraging that. I think it's taking time. I mean, one of the big problems is you know, technology is moving so fast. You know, it doesn't seem that long ago we were on 2G and now we're on 5G and from what I understand, 6G is around the corner. So every time you roll out something out, you, know, you go to the richer areas and it takes a while to get to some of the uh, not so rich areas. I think South Africa is doing a good job. I think what's probably exciting is the, the urbanization that we're seeing across Africa more generally. The populations are increasing very quickly in the, in the big cities, uh, and that's got to create an opportunity for us. It's also a threat to us as well, because I don't know, I think the infrastructure supports it necessarily that well. Uh, and informal settlements, you know, are quite a challenge for a lot of our infrastructure. But, you know, also we have to embrace it and, you know, it could create an opportunity. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're moving in the right direction at least. On blockchain. If blockchain can overnight make corruption virtually impossible and give the world renewed confidence in Africa, what steps do we need to take to get there and who needs a seat at the table? It's the million dollar question at the end of the day. I mean, it's a very good question. How do we get it there? I mean, you know, I, I, I mean business can try and embrace it. I mean, you're, you're, but it's sort of, it, it's a sort of chicken and egg. It's like the people with the first telephone, who do you call? Because if no one else got a telephone, then, uh, you know, it's a bit pointless. But um, you know, I think more and more businesses are looking at it. I think more and more businesses, you know, are thinking about embracing it. You are seeing in other countries, you know, I think Tesla came out the other day saying that they were, they were looking at blockchain. You know, so you, the, the very early adopters are there. So I think big business has to look at it very hard and they can drive it. If you, especially in somewhere like South Africa where you have you know, a limited number of very influential companies. Uh, if they started to move towards that, then uh, you know, I think South Africa could follow quite quickly. Whether we're in, we'd get government to drive it, I think is probably unlikely. I mean, let's be perfectly honest, I think it's going to be difficult for them to do it. So I think it really has to be driven by, by big business. Uh, you know, if you've got someone like an Anglo-American embracing uh, blockchain, uh, at least on this continent, then um, you know, I think a lot of other uh, suppliers would need to follow. Uh, and I think that'd be incredibly exciting because one of the biggest things that holding South Africa back and a lot of African countries back is the sort of corruption element and the perception of corruption. We can move to a system where that's minimized, then, uh, you know, I think it could be overnight changes. Sean, if I gave you a magic wand and I told you that you could change one thing that will bring you to your vision or a smarter city in Africa, 
what would that one thing be and why? I think one of the biggest problems that we see in this market, or I see, in this personal answer, maybe one of the biggest problems I see is uh, enacting on decision making. So I think, and I, and I talked to that about the sort of the wider, you know, especially in the public sector, I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of talk about doing the right things. There's a lot of people that are there that have their, their hearts in the right place. You know, we always focus on the negative, but there are a lot of people there that hearts are in the right place. But I think we struggle with a system that can make sort of aggressive decisions and fast decisions. And if we're going to change South Africa, you know, we're going to need to do something about it. We need to have aggressive, fast decision making. And I know when uh, in a previous role, you know, clients of mine was looking to whether build a factory here or build a factory in uh, Brazil. And Brazil had approved it and signed it and given them the funding before we even had the first meeting. You know, it's, it's really interesting. So I just think as a country, if we're going to solve these problems, we're going to have to take some brave steps, make some big calls. You know, as I say to my team, you know, no decision is the worst decision you can make. You've got to make a decision, even if you're not quite heading in the right path, at least make a decision and get momentum forward. But making no decision, and that's, you know, that's, that's when businesses die. And in closing, what progress do you see in the smart city space over the next one and five years? I think in the short term, what I would like to see is the public sector embracing some of the solutions that we have to help solve the issues such as the water crisis and the power crisis. I think that's a short-term goal. We've got to get that sorted because I know no one's going to grow without water and without power. I mean, I've got a business where, where we do a lot of learning for learnerships, uh, you know, a lot of disabled uh, people. Without water, you know, you've got a massive issue because they can't, you know, they can't use a portable necessarily that easily. Uh, you know, and you know, classrooms are going to be emptied. So, you know, without power, we're going to have we're going to have major issues. So let's get those sorted as quickly as we possibly can. I think over five years, what I'd like to see is you know a move by South Africa, particularly, into you know forming itself for the future. So I think we've got to change our mindset and say there is no point trying to build people-heavy businesses. You know, we need to start changing our people. And I know Cyril uh, Ramaphosa uh, is quite keen on this. Start training our people for the new age. So I'd really like to see South Africa embracing the future rather than focus necessarily on some of the past industries. You know, getting people into design, digital design, preparing them for the internet age, um, because I think that we can make a step change. So I think over five years, I think that's what I'd really like to see. I mean, actually re-looking at our education system, re-looking at, uh, you know, the training of the people that we're producing. So not necessarily for the heavy industries, because they've got it, they're going to move out of uh, people-intensive businesses. They're going to embrace technology, robots, etc. Uh, so I think we've just got to start producing a new generation of, um, of people coming through. And I think that's what I hope we do. And, you know, I think then it could be a really exciting future for us, especially with so many of them... Um, based in, you know, in urban locations, you know, so they can get access to uh, information, get access to e-learning, etc. So I think as a country, we could, we could really do something different. A big thank you to Sean Bennett, Group Executive for Nextech, for this insightful conversation on how Nextech helps in building smarter African cities.